Well, here's another project I just completed. I'm pretty pleased with this. Got a couple screw ups in it, but as usual, it's just a white oak bowl and it's got resin and gumballs in it. And if you'll uh, if you'll hang in there, I'm gonna show you how I made it. What I got right here is a piece of hickory. I went ahead and you know got it you know pretty good to the round on the bandsaw. I got a one inch blade so I can't I can't cut curves with it. And it's too much trouble to change it to a smaller blade just for that. That doesn't make that much difference. But here's a plan. You can see I drew like three circles right here. And there's a method to my madness here where I've got these right here. And I went ahead and drilled one and then realized I probably ought to be uh, videoing this. But I'm going to drill these uh, eight holes, this size right here, right here on all of those. And they're two and a half inches deep. And then I'm going to come in between right about there and I'm going to drill a smaller one using the Forrester bits, same, same depth. So I'm going to put the smaller hole right here. Probably about a 9 16th. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this. Move we'll over to number three. Make sure you come in here right on that point now. Right there it is. All right, here we go. Really easy when you start now. I want walking on this. When I get done, I'll uh, we'll come back. We'll go over to the other table and mix up some epoxy. Well, I've got them all drilled. Looks like my measuring may be off just a little in a couple of them. But uh, I guess we'll live through it. But I can't, uh, I can't pour black, I mean red, black, red, black now because a couple of places, I don't know if you can see that or not. Right in there, and that one right there. Right there. Perhaps you can see where that one sort of went. See, that one sort of went through in there. See it in there? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a sealer in it. Pour it in, pour it out till it all gets soaked. I got a little bit of sealer left over from uh, before. And there was a little bit of rich dye in the bottom of this and it turned it all blue. Uh, Oh well, so I have a blue tint to it. That might be attractive. So I'm just going to pour this sealer in them. And then we'll just work it from one to the other. Like so, see. That didn't have enough there. So I'm just going to pour it back and forth. Let me go get my brush. Okay. And... take this in the other room and put it under the heater to let it dry probably probably till tomorrow to the truth got a video I got to edit for you guys so you know, I've got things to do all right that's it well as usual I've changed my plans again uh, I was going to use red in these but I, I wanted them you know light where they'd be translucent and I was afraid it might look pink. So I made two two changes here. You guys remember gumballs? Well these are uh, actually they're seed pods off a of sweet gum tree and we have an abundance of them. So the plan is this is this is green. I'm gonna to try to do a very light green and then I'm gonna put gumballs in each one of the big holes. So, uh, you know, it'll take up, take less resin, plus these gumballs, when they're turned, they are really pretty. They have some neatest designs inside of them. So, I've got, I think I've got everything. I tried to gather everything here. This is a uh, lightning right here. This, this is, I'm going to thin the epoxy because these gumballs have cheating holes in them. So, I'll get that ready to thin. I got my epoxy here. It's uh, 
SRC. It's actually tabletop self-leveling, but I have found that it works just great for uh, casting. It, uh, it turns good if you turn it right. Now, if you try to turn it slow, it'll chip on you. You've got to turn it fast, and you've got to use a very sharp tool, and you have to use the tool in a shear-type cut. If you try to use it in a scraping cut, the chances of chipping are pretty good. So I've got everything here, including my cornstarch. And the cornstarch, I just I coat my hands with it. And that's what makes my gloves go on a lot better. And plus it cuts down on any sweating or anything like that. Right. I try to use these gloves two or three times. If I can, I mean, it's not that I'm that cheap, and I am cheap, but at the same time, I just think you ought to get the maximum use out of stuff. So, here we go. This is, uh, here we go. This is a 50-50 mix. And this is the resin. I have no idea how much I need. I'm just going to mix a cup full. Just about half. Maybe it's about right. I got another new gallon just in case. Here again, we're back to the swag method. Right there. It looks good. Got one thing. Hold on. All right. Here's what I got. This silver pearl. I'll put a little silver pearl in it. If I didn't mention it before this uh, die, yeah, it's called So Strong, and you can get it off Amazon. And it is super strong. So I got those two. So now I'm gonna get me a couple capfuls of this stuff. And what this does. It, but it, it also is going to take longer to set up. That's okay. I always leave mine set up overnight anyway. So let's see if we can get this green open here. Let's see what it looks like. There you go. This stuff. It don't take much. In fact, that may be, hope that's not too much. Touch a pearl in Okay. And let's see what we got here. I think that'll be fine. I don't remember how much I did because I know I'm going to have to pull more. Get ready to put it in a pressure pot. Now here's a little trick I learned the hard way. If you hear me good, take a piece of wax paper and put it in the bottom of your pressure pot. Because what's going to happen is going to leak. It always gets a little bit down there. So let's just put this in. I don't know how many of you guys have turned resin before. Resin can be sort of tricky to turn. It doesn't like slow turning. I don't care what tool you use. Uh, 
I see a lot of these guys use a, a, uh, a cutter with a negative rake on it. I don't have one. But basically, a negative rake is, is having one at this kind of angle right here. I mean, that, that's basically what it is. So, you know, you got one if you know how to use it right. You have to use it at this kind of angle. And I always turn mine just a little so you get a little more of a slicing motion than a scraping motion. Because scraping does, it has a tendency to want to pop resin out. And I think you need to turn it as fast as you can within reason. I don't mean turn it at 3,000 RPM, but I've already spun this up, and this come up to about, oh, it's, I believe it was 800 and something before it started shaking bad. Now this is, uh, this hickory, some hard blanking wood, especially when it's dry like this. So this may be uh, a little more than I want to chew, but you never know till we get to whirling. So let's get to work and see what we got. Eight hundred and twenty. Well, it's cutting it pretty good. It's going to be pretty wood. Still got a ways to go. I think the plan, and you know yourself now, just don't hold me to it. Because everything changes. If you can see this, the plan, I'm going to come down something like this. Here with a, something like that. That's the plan. We'll find out. As soon as I get these, these uh, flats out, we'll move on. You can tell it's dry. All right, where are we? Got a flat right there. That one don't matter that much because it's going to get out anyway. I think I can go ahead and start doing the uh, shaping of it now. See some color change here. Thought I'd like to see what it looks like. Oh yeah, it's turning good. Place right there. Got a ways to go though. 
get a good sharp one in it, and I went ahead and changed the belt around to the fast belt. I'm going to crank this up to about two grand. Wish I'd have made these holes deeper. I can see that now. This is my first rodeo at this kind of deal, so we'll see. Two thousand. Let's see what it does. different. I'll tell you that for a fact. Oh yeah, I'm almost down to the little one. That's where I want to get. That's down to the little one. Now I'm going to do a quick drop off right at the base of these. Well, it's going to be pretty, guys. Got to go deeper yet. Though. Look at there. I got a void there. Hey, I don't know how that would have happened. There was nothing in there. Hmm. Oh, well. Could have chipped out too. Let's go a little deeper here and then a whole bunch deeper right here. Betsy, see what it's looking like now. Let me go a little more right in here. Yeah, I'm just barely in there. And gumballs are picking up pretty good. See that just where that pith is, which I did not know. I guess I should look better. That's what's causing the work. I think that's gonna be beautiful. I'm going to come in deeper right here, though. I want to get more of the uh, gumball. Maybe it might get past some in voids. If not, I'm going to have to do something with them. I mean, if the rest of it's wood, I can probably just get by with CA and a little bit of sawdust in those voids, and they wouldn't be noticeable. Well, let's see. I like that was 2,500. It seemed to do real well.
sure likes tenons better. I think I'm going to go ahead and do a, a tenon because I'm going to leave the bottom pretty thick anyway. I think that might be better. Well, it's been a couple days. I had to go help a friend install an air conditioner and go do, you know, other things. So, we're back at it. It's certainly, uh, you know, the coating, I'm, this has got nothing but sealer on it. It already shines. Uh, it's men, men wax sanding sealer. And I, there is no, there's no cracks on it that I can see. And spinning it, it doesn't look like it moved any, maybe a hair. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and and put the uh, put the chuck on. Because I've told you this before, I always put this live center in. And I bring it up here to hold it in place. There you go. Just to make sure. A little turn in case there's some grime or something under it. Tighten her up and find the key. And we'll tighten it up and see what we got here. We wear a glove here. Like I said before, if this thing starts to spin, it, it can hurt your hand with those gears right there. So let's we got this down, we got this open. Okay, easy to it, Larry. There you go. We're done. Done, done. Stick a fork in it. I'm going to leave this on and stick it in there. Like so. And that is, <clears throat> in case it comes off, it ain't going nowhere. Now, this is steel. Last time I used a wooden dowel and it, and it came off and it broke it. I'm just a little low there. Pull it up. Tape my cutter, this resin is hard on anything.
slap some sealer in there. And then, uh, you know, two or three coats of sealer, this, these places right here, they will disappear. Yes, I know, I slop it on, but I'm also going to go ahead and hit the outside one more time. It doesn't hurt a thing, because I got some uh, marks on it. I'm pretty pleased with this. Boy, if I'd have done my drilling a little bit better, we'd have been in good shape. I'm going to do another one. Not for right away, because you know, I don't want to get you know, going as too many alike at the same time, basically. But, uh, come on, get back on there. I will be more cautious next time. I think I'll do the next one out of walnut. on it because it is already shiny 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 but there that's just one coat in there and all right I'm a little bit of hurry today so I'm gonna go ahead and put my heater on it Dry it out a little quicker so I can get two or three coats on it, and then I'll finish it up tomorrow. I'm pretty pleased with it. I drilled that other hole. <laughs> what was I thinking? Obviously, I wasn't. Goodness. Oh, sometimes. I'm this bad at 76. What am I going to be like at 86? I fully expect to see. All right, we're gonna let that do that, do its thing there for a little while. Well, it's finished. I went ahead and it's got uh, like five coats of sealer on it, and then I put one coat of the polycrylic, the Minwax polycrylic, water-based. I steel wooled it and a uh, little scotch pad on it and then I took uh, just regular Johnson paste wax, floral wax coated it real good we, while it was still on the lathe took an old sock and buffed the heck out of it and look at it I mean it looks like a brand new dollar I am pretty pleased with this got a couple mistakes that I made I guess I just get in too big a hurry on things I, for instance, like now these smaller holes, I missed one right there. Don't ask me why, but I did. Uh, other than that, uh, it looks pretty good. I think next time I'm, I need to measure my holes a little better and drill them a little more precise. This was more or less an experiment. It turned out real well. I thought it was hickory to begin with, but it, after I got into it, I could easily see that it was uh, white oak has a pith right there, but it is well saturated on both sides with CA glue, so it shouldn't go anywhere. But there it is, gumballs, look at them gumballs. Look at here, maybe. I'm going to do another one pretty soon. And it's going to be walnut, and I'm going to try to make it about yay big, because i got some big walnut out there, and I'm going to use this same technique, except I'm going to be more careful and do some more judicious measuring. But anyway, there you go, guys. I'll take a few stills of this, put on the end. I am pretty pleased with it. I don't know exactly what you call it. I guess it's a white, white old bowl with blue resin and gumballs. That's what makes this hobby fun. Your, your creativity just, it only stops with your own imagination. So, subscribe. Hit that bell, call your mama, and keep them whirling, 
and I'll catch you on the rebound.